So in the last unit, we talked about what are Boolean functions, Boolean values, Boolean algebra, Boolean formulas. What we want to do now is actually how, talk about how we can construct Boolean functions from more primitive operations. So we already still saw two ways to represent a Boolean function, a Boolean expression and a truth table. We also know how, already know how to go from the expression to the truth table. You take the expression, evaluate it for each possible, possible values of the input bits, and then, you get the, and then you can fill the truth table. What we want to do now is exactly the opposite. You start with a description of a function, let's say given as a truth table, and our challenge is to come up with a formula that computes the same Boolean function. Why do we need to do that? Well, that's exactly what we have to do when we go come to design a computer. We know what we want to do, we know what, a what we want a certain unit to do, but then we actually have to actually compose it from primitive gate, from primitive operations. So let's see how we can do it. So again, we continue with our abstract treatment. We're trying to see what is the basic logical way we can actually construct such a Boolean function from primitive operations. Later, once we actually talk about practically constructing them, we will be more practical oriented, we will go step by step and so on. At this point, we just want to make sure what are the principles. So let us start with a specification of a Boolean function given as a truth table. How can we construct it? Well, here is what I'm going to describe to you is a standard way of what's called constructing a disjunctive normal form formula for it. And it goes like this. We actually go row by row in the truth table. We focus only at the rows that have a value of 1. For example, the first row here has a value of 1. Now what we can do is we write an expression that basically gets a value of 1 only at this row. For example, so in particular, since here in this row the values of x, y, and z are 0, 0, and 0, if we look at the expression not x and not y and not z, that is going to be a Boolean function, the green Boolean function, that only gets a value 1 on this row. So now we have one Boolean function. We do the same thing, we construct another Boolean function, another clause, for, another, for each row that has a value of 1. So for example, there's another second row with a value of 1. This time, in here, this row, y equals to 1, while x and z equal to 0. So the clause we write here is not x and y and not z. Again, this is something that completely uh, gets a value of 1 only on this row and gets a value of 0 everywhere else. We do that for every possible row that has a value of 1. Now the purple row. Now we have a bunch of different functions that each one of them gets a value of 1 only at its row and gets a value of 0 in all other rows. But we desire a single function, a single expression that gets exactly the value 1 exactly on all of these rows and 0 on the other rows. How do we do that? Well, that's very simple. We just OR them together. And now we get a single expression, a single Boolean function, that gets value 1 exactly on the rows for which we built clauses for and gets 0 everywhere else. And now we've basically constructed our function as a Boolean expression, only using ands, nots, and ors. Now, of course, once we have this expression, we can start manipulating in very ways. This is one way to write the function as an expression, but if you actually look at it, you can see that we can start changing, a, start changing its format. For example, if you look at the first two clauses, you can see that one of them is not x and not y and not z, while the other is not x and y and not z. Notice that the, we have both possibilities for y and exactly the same fixed value for x. So instead of these two, for, two, two clauses, we can combine them into one clause which does not ask about y and only asks about not x and not z. So we get an equivalent expression that's slightly shorter. There are more manipulations that we can do, let's not go into them, but we can actually write the same expression in many different ways. Some of them will be shorter than others. Some, some of them may, might, be, might be more uh, efficient in terms of when we actually go to implement them in a computer. But the point is, logically, they're all completely equivalent. Now you might wonder, how do you actually find the shortest or most efficient formula that's equivalent to the one we've just derived? Well, that's not an easy problem in general. It's not easy for humans, nor is there any algorithm that can do that efficiently. 
In fact, this is a NP hard problem to actually find the shortest expression that's equivalent to a given one, or even to verify if the expression that you're given is just a constant zero or one. What's more interesting, what I really want to focus at this point, is that we've really proved a really remarkable mathematical theorem that any Boolean function, it doesn't really matter on how many variables and what the Boolean function is, can be represented in an expression using only the operations and, or, and not. Now, to notice how remarkable that is, just think about, just think about Boolean functions on integers, integers functions that you've learned in elementary school. Not every element, not every function on integer numbers can be represented using, let's say, addition or multiplication. In fact, most functions cannot be represented just by arithmetic operations. Yet, because of the finite world that we live in, in the Boolean algebra, every Boolean function can just be represented with and, or, the nots. And that is exactly what gives us a basic power to actually construct computers only with these possible gates, only with these possible operations, and, or, and not. But do we really need all of them? Well, here's a better theorem, if you wish. We don't really need or gates. Just with ands and nots, we can construct any Boolean function. How can we prove that? Well, we already know that if we have ors, we can do everything. We've just seen that. And now, the only thing that we need to show is that we can actually compute an or with and and not gates. But we know how to do that already. We, remember, we recall the Morgan formulas that exactly give us a, a formula for or that only uses not and and gates. So now we have a really more remarkable theorem that we only need these two basic operations to actually compute every, full, every Boolean function. Can we go even less? Can we give up, let's say, the AND gate? Well, that doesn't make sense because NOT only takes one value to one value, doesn't even allow us to combine anything. Can we give up the NOT gate? Well, not really, because AND has this property that if you only feed it zeros, it will always have zero as output. And there are Boolean functions that when you feed them zero, give you one as output, so AND by itself wouldn't suffice. But it turns out that there is yet another operation that by itself does suffice to actually compute everything. So let me introduce the NAND function. So the NAND function, here is a truth table. It gives zero only if both of its inputs are one, and every other possibility it gives one. Log logically, x NAND y is defined to be the negation of x and y. So what's so remarkable about this Boolean function? Well, the nice thing is that we can prove the following theorem, that if you only have NAND gates, you can already compute every Boolean function, you can already represent every Boolean function as an expression using just these NAND gates. How do we prove that? Well, we know that if you can do NOT, and if you can do AND, you can do everything. So we just have to show how to do NOT with NAND gates, and how to do AND with NAND gates. So here's how you do NOT. If you just look what happens when you feed x to both inputs of the NAND gate, you plug it into the truth table in the previous slide, and you can see that NOT x is really represented by x NAND x. That's part one. The second part we need to show, how do we do AND? Well, x and y turns out to be NOT of x NAND y. But how do we have NOT? Well, we've just seen that you can do NOT with NAND itself. So now we've basically reduced the fact instead of using nots and ands, we're just using NAND gates, and we got our amazing theorem that just if you have a NAND gate, you can compute every, everything. And this is exactly what is going to be our approach when we actually go to build a computer. We will give you a basic, a primitive NAND gate operation, and we'll, you will basically build the whole computer, all the complicated logic that we'll actually ask you to build, using just from these basic NAND operations. So at this point, we've just finished our abstract point of view about Boolean logic, and now we're doing a really interesting shift of perspective from the abstract logical operations to the actual gates and the actual gates from which we build computers. This switch really has no, there's no actual difference between the two, two different things in terms of the kind of things that we do, but it's just in the way that we're thinking about them. Until now, we ask you to think about everything as abstract Boolean logic. From now, we're going to start asking, asking you to think about everything as actual little pieces in a computer that computes the functionality that we want.